You're listening to episode 83 of Power Pearls Podcast, intuitive, purpose-driven yarn crafting to empower your knits and pearls. If you are loving this podcast and you want to help it to be sustainable for the long haul, then you can actually become a patron of Power Pearls Podcast. With your help, influence, and support, we can take this exciting ride together. To learn more how to become a patron and support the show, visit patreon.com forward slash Caragot Warner. Hey there, fiber-loving biz makers. If you're ready to create a holistically balanced life and business that converges creativity with mindful living and you are not afraid of making money, working hard, and you have the drive to succeed, then I invite you to sign up for my free 15-minute business coaching discovery session to see if working together is a good fit. So if you want to learn more, visit karagotwarner.com forward slash work with Kara to learn about my coaching programs and to sign up for your free discovery session today. Hello, Tabitha. Hello, my dear. How are you? And welcome back to Power Pearls Podcast. I'm happy to be here. You are my sidekick in crime. I I didn't say that the last few (laughs) episodes. So for any of you guys just finding the podcast, I am joined by the lovely Ms. Tabitha Hedrick, who has been a uh, who's been on the podcast multiple times. And I've called you my sidekick in crime because, you know, we work together on creative knitting. I mean, you're still the contributing editor. Yeah. And so you're the design director of Sweet Georgia Yarns as well. So, And the crime um, part, I'm usually the one that causes the trouble. So that makes perfect sense. <laughs> there you go. And I love, sure. that's what I love about you, your laugh, because that's, uh, you know, when I decided to do this, so it's a seasonal, you know, we're I'm going in this new direction. Power Pearls is now a seasonal podcast. And I, I knew I, I said, you know, I really would love to have a co-host or, I'd ha- or I want to have someone that I love talking to. And of course, you've always been in the back of my mind, like always the urge is to have Tabitha on the show. <laughs> and I thought, why not just have her on every show if she's going to do it? So you agreed to do this, um, this season. Always. So who knows what leads, you know, what, 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 you know, what holds, <laughs> what the future holds, right? But That's it doesn't right. matter. It's like, we'll just kind of go with the flow because this is working really well. We've been like... Um, this is perfect uh, for our the- our in our topic today because we've been cranking out these episodes, right? Yeah. Um, so we're sitting here and we are doing something called batching. We yes. Are, yeah. And funny enough, that is this episode's topic. Yeah. So batch. So what we're going to talk about today is batching and theme days. So right. people also call them theme days, the pros and the cons. So th- we're going to just talk about you know just different um, some tips. You know, when not to batch, what makes sense, you know, it's working smarter, not harder. Right. So lots of fun, you know, little things that we're going to dive into. And so I just think um, this is great that we're talking about this today since we are doing, we're really in the mode. And I was saying right before in the pre-chat, before we started this episode, it's like, we are just like banging it out. That's we know right. In past episodes, like in the one-off episodes, it was like, we're done. Took a little time maybe to get in the groove and then we're done. And and when we're done, when we were done, we were like, we're, we were done, even though it was just sort of like half hour or an hour. But in this case, we're like, we planned ahead. We knew we were going to batch. And now it's like, and I, I use the, ter- the kind of the phrase, the body in motion stays in motion because it's true. It's like, once you get in the zone, you get doing this thing, whatever this thing is, you're just going. That's you just right. want to keep crushing it, right? Yep. So that's what we're doing right now. Yeah. Right yeah, now. It's the same thing when I write too. And the first like 30 minutes is kind of like torture, you know, like, I know. Oh, where's my coffee? I'm having a hard time pushing through. And then suddenly, like, right at the 30 or 40 minute mark, or however many words that is, suddenly it's like, <laughs> oh, okay, I- I'm in this. Yeah. I got this. And I don't want to stop. <laughs> that's the same thing. Yeah. That's where batching comes in really handy. For sure. Yeah. So, d- I have, a, you know, we have our bullet points in front of us. Right. The first one is, well, first, I don't know if we did this in order. We should, they, these are these, some of these are kind of maybe not in the order that we'd want to talk about, but may, but anyway, go ahead. You were going to say, I was gonna say first, let's explain what batching. Yes. Oh, yes, are. of course. Please. 
theme days is this, I don't know who came up with it first. Michael Hyatt talks about it a lot. Lisa Jacobs talks about it a lot. And there's a couple other big guru types that talk about it a lot. But it's where you have your week ahead of you and you theme the day. So like d Mondays would be the days that you take photos. Like that would be like your major theme that day. Mm -hmm. Day two, Tuesday would be, I I'm just guessing here, would be graphics day. That's where you take all those photos and you make your graphics and yada, 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 yada. You know, day three would be your writing content day or, or just, or an admin day or just whatever it is that you happen to be doing in your business. Um, so that's what a theme day is. And then you have batching, which is where you take a particular time block, whether it's a couple hours or the whole day or just however you want to work it within your schedule. And you batch things together within that, that block. So if it's going to be taking or skit, recording podcasts forever, we schedule a time and we batch and push out all of those podcasts at once. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's you're creating graphics, you're batching them. So you're creating all your graphics at once for the whole week, you know, or whole month or however when you do it. Lots of people do this with their social media too. On Sunday, they'll sit down and they'll batch all of their social media posts for the whole week. Um, so that's what batching is mm -hmm. compared to theme days. Okay, no, that's good because um, in the uh, episode uh, "Start Small, Go Deep," mm -hmm. we talked about this there. We did that, yeah. Okay, um, and uh, because it took me a while to figure that out, and I think that is um, at times confusing for people. You know, what's the yeah. difference between batching and 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 theme days? Because some people think it's the same, and I guess there you could, you know, there are crossovers. Like, but you explained it very well. So, so for example, um, if I have a day where I'm doing my videos. I think, mm -hmm. and I did talk about this in, the, in that video, in that, in that other episode. So it's like everything that has to do with the video production is the theme. Right. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I so, would think so. Like I have, so Friday is my, the theme is catch up day. <laughs> so I don't schedule anything on my calendar that day. I, it's the day that I'll look back at the previous days and see anything I missed and I'll catch up on it. Like whether it's catching up on my knitting quota or catching up on emails, or catching up on bookkeeping or just whatever it is that I wasn't able to mm -hmm. complete. So Friday for me is my catch up theme day. Um, uh, Tuesdays are typically my writing day. So that's the theme. So it's writing. I'm That's where I'm focusing on answering all of my emails. I'm writing my blog articles i'm writing my social media content um and and i'll you know be batching it all so i'm going to mm -hmm. do all of my social media stuff all at one time so i get into mm -hmm. that groove i'm going to be writing my articles all at one time so i get into that groove so this is a question that just came up actually um uh, with one of my coaching clients about mm -hmm. batching um because we explained it right but here's right. the thing that confused her and i'm glad i really i thought about this <laughs> how do you batch it meaning how do you Let's say you want to plan 20 blog posts in, in right. the next, you know, six months or whatever it is. Where do they go? Where do you start? And so I mentioned now, yes, the sp spreadsheets are great for doing mm -hmm. this. I see that the like, editorial calendars, yeah. right? Yeah. So I, I, I mentioned the editorial calendar and how that comes into play right. uh, or content calendar, which, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe that means we're going to have to explain what that is also. But these are the things that connect back to your, let's say your batching. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to work on, um, like in this case, we are creating all these podcast episodes. Right. We happen to create a, a Google Doc that we're sharing. Mm -hmm. But let's like for the purposes of my planning to create the structure for the season, all of these topics are in a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And then when we were re when are we recording all of these? And then when are they going to be released? When is each one going to drop? Uh, when are they going to be is, edited? When are yes. we going to be graphics for them? Da, 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 da. Right. And this can ideally a lot of people use, you know, I think a spreadsheet is good. Mm -hmm. I also use Asana. You can use Trello. Yeah. Um, Red booth, I'm not, um uh, there's another one. Boot camp, boot camp is another one. There's a bunch. Base, there's base like camp or base camp. Base that's camp. it. Base camp. There's a ton of project management. Yeah. Yeah. So um, maybe there. we're getting a little head, but I yeah. just wanted to <laughs> start bit. with that now that we were yeah. introducing it because I had a client, you know, say, but okay, I understand the concept, but where do I write these things or where do I start or where do I put them? My first, my first suggestion, because if it's something looks really big, mm -hmm. um, 
I said, let's take the example of wanting to write in a blog or you want to put together an e-course or a video series. Right. You you turn it into a project Mm -hmm. and you take a good old fashioned piece of paper Mm -hmm. and you outline it first. So you create the skeleton, right? And then you have bullets and it could be in a a Google Doc or Mm -hmm. Evernote or a Word Doc. Right. Or like I said, piece of paper. And then you take that outline and then in between the bullets, right? You flesh it out, you flesh it out, you flesh Mm -hmm. it out. And then you could, if you feel comfortable in that, you know, setting where you can keep fleshing out Mm -hmm. or you, you add those bullets and line items into an organized spreadsheet. Yeah. Or into Trello or into Asana or whatever. Those or are keep pop- it just in the list. Keep so it simple. keep it yeah, in the list. Keep it as simple as possible. And and honestly, any project, any project starts with yeah. brainstorming. And so it's through that brainstorming that you're also going to brainstorm. You know, like I have a knitting book that I'm working on right now. And so I have a list of all of the chapters. And within those chapters, I have a list of the information I want to portray. It's not in any coherent order, but it's just like, I know I need to talk about this. I need to talk about this. I need to talk about that. And then, and then in each of those, I have a list of what do I need to have to be able to show what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. What do I need to knit? And so now I have my list of all of the swatches and projects I have to knit. I have my list of all of the photos I need to be able to shoot. I have the list of the tutorials that I need to be able to shoot or photograph or whatever it is that I'm going to be doing. And so from that list, now I have my batch list. I know on knitting days, I'm going to be knitting all of those 400 swatches. Mm-hmm. On photo days, I'm going to be shooting all of these X, Y, Z. And so it's, you could, batching that way, it says, if I batch all of these into this three-week period, because it doesn't have to be in a single day or a single sitting, mm-hmm. I can, knit, you know, knitting especially, we know that you're not going to knit a sweater in a day. <laughs> it's a long-term process. But my knitting, if it's going to take a month, then that month is going to be where I'm. all of my work blocks are going to be focused on that, those batching, those swatches. And you're really, you're like the master of that. You know, yeah. like you, when you told me how you figure out <laughs> X amount of, you know, rows per day <laughs> times or grams, the, you the width of weight. the, you know, <laughs> by the length of the yeah. thing, you know, so it's, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's breaking it down to, it doesn't that, have to be that complex to those baby, <laughs> but still like those baby steps. If I know I need 10 swatches to be able to mm-hmm. present this e-course, for example, then I know that on my knitting theme days that's I'm going to be batching all of those swatches I'm going to hammer out all the swatches and then on photography theme day I'm going to be shooting the pictures for all of these different things so if you have your editorial and your content calendar that means you can see ahead what you need to photograph or what you need to knit or what you need to draw for graphics and so knowing a head like that, then you can do it all at once and batch it all together. Okay, photo day. I see I need to shoot photos of this book review. I need to shoot photos of this swatch. I need to shoot photos of the sweater. So why would I shoot those all on different days Mm -hmm. when I already have my camera set up and my background set up and all this stuff on this day? So I'm going to shoot them all right now. That's how you batch. Okay. So yeah, so we talked about you know, how, you know, this idea of batching and theme days, and then how do you plug that into a system, a document, a spreadsheet? So now that we understand that, we can kind of talk about some of these other areas or these other ways to sort of apply this batching mentality. So yeah. you want to, we'll just kind of dive into some of these bullets here. Sure, yeah. Um, so actually, they're one of the, and I don't know if you wrote this or I did, but <laughs> when it makes sense to batch and when not to, was right. that yours? Because um, is there, I have no you, idea. No, <laughs> but when is there makes, a time? Do you think that it doesn't make sense? Because oh, like, let's say definitely. you've got lots of errands or other things, or you know, you you need to um, put out a fire. Like, yeah. okay, how do you? That's a good one. How do you deal with putting out a fire? Putting out a fire, are you. That's called an emergency situation. But sometimes those are every day for some people, which sometimes means you're not planning be, well. Which means that you're not planning well. You are in survival mode and you need to, to roll it back, slow things down, and then work until you can build up a solid foundation where you don't have that. So if, you're, if putting out fires every day is like somebody saying, something's so wrong with this pattern, then you might need to look at getting a new tech editor. Like that might help mm-hmm. you so you don't have to put out pattern support fires all the time. 
they'll still come in. So for example, I got two yesterday. And of those two, both of them were super simple fixes. And I am a pro at saying I will get, at, thank you for this information. I will update the pattern within a week. And so I will, if it's simple enough, I will schedule that to go on my pattern day, you know, pattern update day. That's really, that's because, you know what, I just, I'm thinking, uh, you know, this brings up a question. So, um, like if it's a dyer, like, I, oh my gosh, this chart is humongous and it's got major problems, which I, we've had two of those happen in the mm -hmm. past couple of years. I will update it immediately and get mm -hmm. it and fix it and get it back out there. But sometimes if it's a small typo or just, you know, yesterday it was a <laughs> stitch multiple, the number was wrong. So it was somebody, oh, bless her beautiful heart. She was knitting a gauge swatch for a shawl. I love her. Do you know how rare that is for anybody to gauge swatch for a shawl? I know. But anyway, <laughs> so in doing that, she was working the increase pattern. And so just the stitch multiple when she first did the initial cast on was just was not set up for her doing a gauge swatch right away just um, so it's a very simple update and those those simple updates I I will do that on my pattern days which I mm -hmm. schedule two days a week where I have a two-hour block where it's all pattern stuff it's pattern updates it's writing patterns it's whatever it is that I have to do and then there's days I have to put out a fire my boss needs this like five minutes ago I'm going to get right on that. And mm -hmm. that just might mean that's why I schedule a catch up day in my week because there are some days I'm not going to get it all done. That's it's really not. good advice because um, you need to build in that. You said the catch up yep. day. Mm -hmm. Some people call it like a blank, blank canvas day, right. or a flex day. I know Michael, I think Michael Hyatt calls it a flex day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I just, I had a quick question about, about this because, you know, you mentioned if, if something comes up, like mm -hmm. if some people aren't sure, is this a fire? Oh, I have to jump on it now. <laughs> yeah. it, comes, it comes down to confidence. Right. If, let's say, because I'm kind of dealing with this too. Like I am a freelancer. So I work with other companies uh, in the capacity like I did when I was an editor. So mm -hmm. I'm like their you know, editor in a box is really you know my little term for yeah. me these days. Um, and so I, I handle the logistics for um, their pattern collection. Mm -hmm. And so I might get it something on Slack, you know, where someone messages me and says, oh, there's an error in this pattern. And I sometimes I will get those on a daily basis. And I'm just yeah. like, um, like, so that means that I have to fix it in the layout and the pattern because yeah. right I do the, all the, the, mm -hmm. the, lay, the patterns for this company. Um, and so I'm like, okay, do I do it now or do I wait until my, my, my day, yeah. my, my freelance or my the now, day whatever, for that account. Yeah. Like, cause whatever that's a tough the, one because it is, it really they, is. They expect something right away. And so here's the thing. I just want to finish my thought on this because uh, my thinking was, do I, cause I want my, my pattern or my, whatever we call it, my um, editorial day mm -hmm. to be um, <clears throat> Tuesday, Monday, whatever. Right. Um, and that's it. And then the rest of the week is focused on my other business activities. But then you um, get on those but, days, you get editorial problems. Right. So do I just say uh, every day or maybe Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I dedicate one hour to mm -hmm. the accounts, the account and management? I find that while I have a, a theme for the day, that theme for the day really just is my main work block. So I mm -hmm. have a section first thing in the morning, I take the kids to school and all the way until lunch, I have a good four and a half hour block there. That's where I'm gonna batch stuff. Now after the kids come home and I'm helping them with their homework and whatever, I, that's where I take my laptop downstairs and I do the other little things, putting out little fires if I need to, catching up on email that I didn't check in that four hour time block. Um, so uh, just because you have a theme for the day, again, it's similar. We had a conversation in the past about the one thing, like mm -hmm. your focus should only be on one thing. No, it doesn't negate the other things that you do to sustain your business or your household or your life. Mm -hmm. um, that's so, really, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say the, the other part of putting out fires and oh my gosh, everything's a fire, feels like a fire. I think we've been fed into that almost because we have our email on all the time and we have our notifications on all the time. So you're getting ding, ding, yep. ding. Email comes in. I need to respond to this right away. It's a huge mm -hmm. thing. And it was a real hard thing for me to overcome. But I turned off all the notifications on my emails for my phone and my computer. And I only check my email three or four times a day. 
I have That's scheduled mm-hmm. times. And during those scheduled times is when I will, I will either reply and solve it. If I can fix it in 10 to 15 minutes, then I will handle it within that 10 to 15 minutes. If it's something that's going to take longer than 15 minutes, then I let them know that I will get back to them within X number of days. And I will put that on my calendar during a catch up day or whatever, whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Tim Ferriss talks about that in the four hour work week, yeah. but he would say you're checking email too many times. I mean, it is, I, I think but, it's a little extreme to, to he, he says once yeah. a day, he says, try to get yourself down to once a day. But then again, it's not, you know what, if you're in a flow yeah. and then people understand that, you know, you have a certain consistent way of getting back to someone, yeah. you not be that the moment you send an email, yeah. you probably won't hear from me for another 24 hours, but I will get to you because I will check my email and I'll be very thorough about it. I can't do 24 hours. I have a personal angst about letting anybody sit in their unknowing for that long because I am often the one that is left sitting for 24 hours. I know, I know. You know, and and by the time somebody does get back to me, dude, I've already moved on. I don't Mm -hmm. even know what you're talking Mm -hmm. about. Whereas if, you know, during my lunch break, I will reply and say, you know, I give them an answer. If it's 10 minutes fix, I will fix it in that 10 minutes. If not, sure. then I let them know when I can. And that way they're not left hanging. I don't have an angry customer because <sighs> some knitters can be very, very upset in their email. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I don't like to let them sit with that upsetness. I just don't. I, it's, so mm-hmm. I, I check my email about yeah. three to four times a day. But I think that it is so from that aspect, the customer service, that's a whole different thing. I mean, I yeah. think our personal email, it's like, you know, your newsletter. Yeah, personal, I'm so, sorry, you're on your own. Sorry, yeah, Grandma. I mix, forgot to mix reply of personal, a week ago. Yeah, <laughs> business and personal. But I mean, the truth is, if you have nowadays, people have um, automated. Well, even if you don't have an automated thing, mm-hmm. people know if you respond, if you have a question and then you get a response in 24 hours. That's sort of like a standard for digital communication. Yeah. yeah. So I think most people understand that because yeah. at the end of the day, we then if we're always operating from that place of getting back to someone that quickly, we're always going to be sort of in urgent mode. Yeah, always. So, and you don't want to be in no. that. So you have to get in this mindset of, I will check it one or however many times a day that you want during a scheduled time when you can devote time to be able to answer back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you can fix it in 10 minutes, then fix it. If it takes longer than 10 minutes, then let them know you have scheduled it and we'll take care of it by X date. Like that is like my go-to answer. And I also have work hours and do not disturb hours set on my phone because I'm not going to reply to work messages at nine o'clock at night. So Mm -hmm. my Slack and all of that kind of stuff is set. So I'm not disturbed after 6 Mm p.m. Exactly. Because that is, we talked about mindset and maintaining our passion. And if I'm on the clock 24 7, yeah, there's I'm no going to burn out real that. fast. Yeah, absolutely. Crash and burn, baby. Yeah. But I wanted to go back to the work blocks um, you mentioned earlier before we keep, you know, moving to the next thing, because that, that if you have other things in the mix of things that you need to do, as long as your work block, that main chunk of time, is your theme. That's when you can get in the zone like right. you know, and, and really do rich work. I wrote the word in, in our little doc here because rich work, like I've heard that phrase mm-hmm. used before, you know, and it's, it's such a great way to term it because it is, it's where you really do that work. That's really um, deeper, meaningful. Yeah. You're tapping into, you're really going deep. You're peeling the layers. I feel like that's what we're doing with this podcast because we're so in tune with what we're talking about in this episode, knowing that it relates back to something we talked about in some of our previous episodes, because it's all right here. We're like sort of, you know, you know, residing in all of this stuff here. And, um, but yeah, that, that was a really good point. So I wanted to go back to that about the whole work block thing, other things happening because I try to do the same thing in my day where I have a main work block and then the other little miscellaneous stuff. Mm -hmm. If, If you have to, you know, run out or, put out a fire. I will put out fires during fire putting out period. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But you know, those work blocks are really handy. And I, I, you know, I think you mentioned this, it, you're switching gears a lot less. So your productivity Mm -hmm. is higher, your energy is stronger, your focus gets better. So it's, it's, it's letting you get in 
Mm -hmm. Well, that's it. I mean, so it's like um, the higher productivity, you're more efficient, right? Right. So that that's, that's definitely the case. You get more done in less time. I mean, that's to me, it's like golden baby. Um, So the switching gears, like uh, it's almost like a computer um, or, you know, like when you, so computers actually can't multitask, by the way. Not well at all. Um, mm-hmm. We can't. So you have lots of programs open, mm-hmm. but each only one program can actually be used at one time, yep. really, technically. Um, and we're the same way. So, you know, we, we really can't do that anyway. So if we try, we're going to do a really crappy job of whatever it is that we're trying to do. Yep. So when we're batching, when we're focusing on those theme, those theme days, um, there's less gear switching. And then what happens is when you s- switch gears and you go on to that new thing, you have to ramp up all over again. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, you said it's this always that, that dry start, you know, like, oh, okay, I, I'll, I'll get started, I guess. It's it, that dry start. And then, mm-hmm. and then you get into the groove. Mm-hmm. Just and then, the, and you get more ideas, and you'll make notes, and you'll take those notes, and you're going to put them back in your calendar, and you're going to review them mm-hmm. later. Um, yeah, just batching, having a solid chunk of time to really do something is so mm-hmm. so important. Mm-hmm. So I know that um, we were going to talk about our tools for productivity, um, as far as you know how this batching mentality how we use those uh, tools. So that's going to be another episode, right? Yeah, check in next time. Yeah. So, um, and also, I guess we'll talk about uh, the marketing clouds. Maybe that's... Yeah. Because we're going to be talking about social media guys Mm -hmm. as well. So again, there's always going to be a little bit of crossover, but I think... I think we've kind of wrapped it up. You know, the bottom line is work smarter, not harder, right? right? So batching and theme days really works in that sense because you're definitely... Just the idea of getting more work done in less time. Really, mm-hmm. I like that. I li- Absolutely. Like, we like you that. <laughs> like you <laughs> could take a 40, turn a 40 hour work week into a 20 hour work week because your yep, 40 hours might yeah. be like lots of spinning of wheels mm-hmm. and doing busy work. That's something we didn't talk about, but the busy versus yeah. productivity, mm-hmm. busy work does not equal work. And the bottom line, if, especially if you want to reach a goal, yeah. be it in a business to put money in your bank account or you want to self be improve yourself in some way, um, you have to do work that's going to actually measure that. It's like right. going to get you from point A to point B. Right. So the busy stuff. And oh, spend, yeah, I checked off things on my list. That's not busy work. Yeah, or that's and we busy. spend half of our time like trying to get ourselves motivated to do something. And then the other half of our time getting ready to do that one exactly. thing, you know, that something. Totally. And so batching it and putting all one, you're already cutting out like, I don't know, hours of your time mm-hmm. right there, sitting there debating and trying to motivate yourself to do the work because you'll totally. get in the groove. Yeah. So that's it. We, we, uh, we did it. We, that's we, right. uh, we wrapped it up. Another episode in the bag. Boom. Boom. All right. <laughs> All right. I always said I hate when people do that, but I just did it. Boom. We both did it. I'm good so, at it. So you, are. you have to like it when I do it. <laughs> yeah. All right, Tabitha. So I will see you in the next episode. That's right. right. Take care. Bye. Bye. I am super excited to share that I'm going to be teaching a how to podcast course at the upcoming TNNA trade show. So you guys have heard me talk about this in the past. It is the National Needle Arts Trade Association and there's a trade show coming up June 13th through the 17th. And I am gonna tell you a little bit about this course. It is on Saturday morning, the 16th. And if you are interested in starting your own podcast or maybe you want to get on a podcast or you just want to really learn, you know, what this medium is all about, because this is where it's at, you guys. You know, this is a great platform to really get the word out about what it is that you do. So uh, if you're not really sure where to begin, this course will provide you with the tools to get started. And I'll show you how to determine your show concept, choose equipment, create show graphics, set up your feed and equip you with the essentials to set up a podcast-friendly website, and also how to market and get your podcast out to the masses. So this is perfect for shop owners. So if you own a yarn shop or you're a yarn crafter, designer, 
And this is great. This is a great platform for you to get your word out. And also there will be a lab portion where you get to learn how to edit an episode. Okay, so check it out by going to tnna.org and then click on the education tab or button and then scroll to the Saturday section, the Saturday classes, and you will see Saturday, June 16th, you will see my class. Again, it is called Become Your Own Media Company, Creative Podcasting and Digital Marketing Strategies for Shop Owners and Yarn Crafters. Hope to see you there.